Welcome to today's webinar, Go With Flow Swing Trading. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how Superior Profit Way can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, let us go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topics, we will go through some basics of swing trading using stocks, what kind of annual profit is achievable. We will make conservative assumptions to come to this annual profit percentage. Why you may go beyond technical analysis. Though today we will focus on technical analysis that is looking at stocks using charts there are reasons why one may look beyond technical analysis. I'll explain that. And also the need for precision and unambiguity. I will walk through the mindset that is essential for swing trading, swing trading in different market conditions, and then go into the detail of go with flow trading. That is the trend following swing trade either in the long direction or in the short direction. We will look at different Q system indicators that help us to take those trades easily and unambiguously at the right edge of the chart. We will look at those indicators and we will also see how to decide acceptable reward risk ratio. We will look at some actual go with flow trades that were taken and shared in our traders community. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask me anytime using the Q&A panel. I will try to answer them as I go along. If I cannot answer them during the session, I'll make sure every question is answered before we finish today. Swing trading. Swing trading is a way of riding the swings in a stock move. Stocks sometimes go up and sometimes go down. Sometimes it may move sideways. By following the swings, one is able to profit from both up market as well as from down market. Swing trading can be used on any market it may be USA market, Singapore market, Hong Kong market, India market, China market, etc. And also on any instrument like stocks, stock options, futures, forex, etc. In superior profit way, we suggest new traders to start only with stock trading, which is slower than high leverage instruments like forex or futures, etc only if somebody is able to make profit with a slower instrument like stock i suggest one may try if required to go for high leverage instruments so in this session we'll focus only on stocks what are the optimal stocks for swing trading are those that display clearly recognizable swings 
which is common to liquid stocks. It's also common to futures, forex, etc. But we will focus on stocks in today's session. Options on these underlying instruments can also be used. Swing trades tend to have typical holding period between few days to few weeks. And we can identify these opportunities easily using the search program in Q system that is Q Sonar. I will go through several trades from our traders community that were identified and taken using Q trading system. Because swing traders follow the swings of the stock, which may go up sometimes, which may go down, and they have a short holding period, swing traders need to have a certain mindset to be successful in trading. That is, they don't attempt to hold the stock for a longer term. When we take the trade, our aim is to hold for certain profit target. In Q system, we can identify those targets using our charts. And from our data, we see most swing trades exit within few days to maximum maybe few weeks. Trying to hold it for long term is not useful. That can be done in long term investing, which is distinct from swing trading. We may discuss that in a separate session. But for swing trading, we would like to exit it once the profit target is hit, or in case if the stop loss is hit, then also we would like to exit that trade. We will not like it to turn into long term investing. At the same time, we don't want to turn it into day trading. That means we will not and we do not need to look at the five minute chart, 10 minute chart or sit in front of terminal whole day. For swing trading, we can make an entry decision based on objective criteria at the end of the day, maybe just before market close, take the position a long or short position. And because at that time itself, we know what is our expected profit target and what is our stop loss level. My suggestion is to enter the good till cancel that is GTC order for profit booking as well as stop loss with the brokerage. And then we are free from that trade, we can go about our life doing other things that we need to take care of. We will not like to sit in front of terminal whole day and look at the five minute chart, 10 minute chart moving up, moving down. Because swing traders simply follow the swing of a stock and the direction that a stock will move is never truly known. A swing trader needs to trade without any preset bias. So even if it is a very strong company like Apple, or Singapore Telecom or Singapore Airlines. If the stock is going up, a swing trader will try to take a low risk long entry. And if the stock is going down, a swing trader will confidently take a low risk short position and exit it as soon as the profit target is hit, will not hold it for the long term. Because we exit the swing trades quickly, each of them has moderate profit. We are not expecting to make 100% profit, 70% profit from each stock trade. Our data shows that on average, we may expect between 2 to 4% profit in each stock swing trade. Assuming we are trading liquid stocks. That is our suggestion anyway in superior profit. We don't like to trade penny stock or speculative stocks. We are also willing to take small loss at pre-planned price level. That is the stop loss level that we can decide unambiguously from the charts. I will show that in today's session. 
what is important to make sure that on average our profits are larger than our losses how we ensure that is by looking at the q charts when we take a trade we have a clear idea what can be possible profit target and clear idea about the stop loss point so based on the entry price visually from the chart we can easily see whether the reward is acceptable relative to the risk if not we don't take the trade even if media is saying that this stock is going to skyrocket or it is going to decline heavily we just trust our own objective analysis and if the reward risk ratio is not acceptable we can do that visually we don't need to use any calculator then we don't take the trade the other characteristics that is essential to swing traders is to adhere to strict position sizing so one may risk say only 2% of one's account size in each trade that means if at a time five swing trades are open then the maximum risk to the account is 10% that is our standard guideline in the beginning if somebody is new to stock trading one may risk only 1% of account size in each trade that will allow us to trade without fear and also allow us to trade confidently both are required to make money consistently in market the last characteristics that is good to have for swing traders is to follow a set of stocks some people just look for any trade from the market on any stock they may or may not know about the stock that is what some technical traders do just look at a stock chart see that there is a trading potential and take the trade that is not my suggestion i have seen that if we follow a few stocks regularly then we start to have a kind of understanding of how the stock is moving where the supports and resistances are and that helps us to anticipate a trade when we anticipate a trade we are not going to immediately enter it we will wait for the confirmation signal and in q system there are unambiguous checklists that can be used to confirm if a valid trade setup exists for example this go with flow trend following trade setup and once it exists because we were already anticipating it without second guessing we can take the trade we will not rush to look at media reports or not call up our friends to ask what they are doing with the stock we will not even boast to any of our friends or maybe to spouse that i took a long position in this stock it's going to do great we'll just follow a systematic approach manage risk take small position in every trade and take it confidently when the signals are confirmed again i'll demonstrate that with actual trades from the community we may be able to also look for some trades that are identified right now based on the weekend analysis it's also posted in the traders community so we we'll look at past trades as well as look at trades that are signaled right now so once we have this mindset that is essential for swing trading we are able to trade in different market conditions a market goes through different phases in a trending market stock moves up or down in a trend let me draw it when a stock is going up in an uptrend it tends to go up in swings especially if it is a liquid stock and when it goes up in swings it makes highs that are successively higher and also make lows 
that are successively higher. So that is the definition of uptrend. One definition that a stock chart is displaying higher high and higher low. Similarly, when a stock is going in downtrend for a liquid stock, it often displays highs that are successively going down and lows that are also successively going down. So this lower high and lower low on the stock chart identifies downtrend. And higher high, higher low identifies uptrend. This is one of the market conditions. The other market conditions can be sidewise market when a stock's highs and lows are at approximately same level. A reversing market where after going up for a while, a stock shows some sign of reversal. In our case, a headwind signal. Just like an aeroplane entering and headwind tends to slow down, when the headwind signal appears on our chart, we are careful about any long trade that we were holding. We may exit the long position or at least tighten stop. And in some cases, using the headwind signal, we can take a short trade right at the very top. And if the headwind signal appears in a downtrend, then we may be able to catch the very low of the stock using a headwind long trend. So this is a reversing market where we are able to catch the top or bottom of a stock. The last market condition that we have identified is when a stock was say going up and it drops suddenly, stops at a support level and just starts to go up. We may take a long position right at the point it starts to go up. We call it exhausting market. As if a stock has exhausted its down move and starting to go up. So we have identified these four market conditions, trending, reversing, sideways, and exhausting. For each of them, we have created a trade setup and only one trade setup to make our lives simpler and go with flow is the name we have given to our trend following trade setup. And we'll discuss this setup today. For all of these setups, including go with flow, we have created a set of unambiguous checklists that helps us know instantly. I can do it within 10 seconds. If you are starting to use Q system, you may take a minute or so. But within one minute, we should be able to know at the right edge of the chart if a valid trade setup exists. That is on technical charts. You can access this unambiguous checklist from our website. So if we go to our homepage, superiorprofit.co, education and swing trading, you can see the four trade setups for the four distinct market conditions. Go with flow for trending market, headwind for reversing market, box for sideways and bounce for exhausting market. Today we'll focus only on the go with flow setup. If you click on go with flow, you will see there is a brief description. And then importantly, there is an unambiguous checklist. These are the conditions that are to be made for go with flow long trade. And if we are taking a trend following short trade, these are the conditions to be met on the daily hop on chart. I will show you the chart after some time. And similarly, 
there is one condition for this trade setup on weekly backdrop chart there are few chart examples we can look at that but anyway i will go through some trade examples from our traders community later on you may go through these charts to see how one could take swing long or swing short trades at the right edge of the chart using these unambiguous checklists i see there is a hands up feel free to type your question in the q and a panel brian i am keeping an eye on the q and a panel if i see any question i will try to answer them let me continue there is a question about what is the objective of this webinar the objective of this webinar to explain the go with flow trade setup that is a trend following trade setup that can be taken on liquid stocks it may be used in other instruments also but for now we will focus only on stocks there is a question on do you need to pay for q indicators yes the q system is a commercial system so if you want to use the q system then it has to be purchased if you have your own system you may still use the concepts from this webinar using your indicators i use q systems I will not have any comment on other indicators but I will just explain how the philosophy system and risk management can be used to trade profitably. Thanks for the question. So continuing with the slide the trend following trade we call it go with flow as if it is going with the waves of the river. We identify the trend using higher high and higher low for a long trend in the candle chart and also check condition is candle shape is bullish or not that is hollow or with lower tail let me draw it and it is showing our glass okay so i will not be able to show that on the whiteboard let me go to a chart this is a stock chart of silver and this is a daily chart you can see from the top right hand corner so every bar or candle that is shown here is for one day and these candles have a shape and these candles have a color so for now let us focus on the shape if this candle shape is hollow that means it opened at the low and closed at the high in superior profit way we say then this candle is bullish only by looking at this candle not with respect to the surrounding candle but only on this day price opened low closed high so it was bullish meaning people were more aggressively buying than selling in contrast this candle which is a solid candle opened at the high at or near the high and closed at or near the low shown by the solid background so this candle in isolation is bearish then there are some candles which has lower tail for example this candle here we have a open on close both near the top of the candle and from the lower tail we can see that price tried to go down but then some bigger players must have bought the stock in this case etf silver slv etf aggressively to push price back up so if a candle is having lower tail we conclude that only on that day it is bullish similarly if we have a candle with upper tail for example on this day's candle where the open and close is 
almost at the same level and it has an upper tail so price tried to go up but some bigger player must have sold heavily to push price down so we conclude a candle with an upper tail is bearish and sometimes candle like this which has both upper tail and lower tail or this also has upper tail and lower tail we see price tried to go up but sellers came in price tried to go down buyers came in so we say this candle shape is indecisive that is how we read the candles we don't need to read any other pattern in the candle so in summary a hollow candle is bullish a solid candle is bearish candle with lower tail is bullish candle with upper tail is bearish and candle with both lower and upper tail is indecisive so in a trend following trade we would like to make sure that the chart is showing higher high higher low and also the immediate candle is bullish for a long trade we are looking at conditions for long trade so we would like to have the last candle that is at the right edge of the chart as a bullish shape candle now when it is going in uptrend we wait for price to come down to bottom of the swing and tilt up and the exact entry point is decided by the cyan candle color that is the flow candle color in go with flow setup let's see that in the chart here we see that silver is going up and down in waves initially it was going down and at the right edge it is going up so when it is going up in uptrend with higher high higher low we wait for price to come down and then tilt up and give this cyan color candle that will be the optimal entry point so in an uptrend we just look for the cyan candles in a downtrend we will look for the magenta candles that is one of the condition that helps us pinpoint the exact entry point at the same time we want to see for a long trade the stock is going up faster than broad market we can see that by using the relative performance on the chart on this meta stock chart q chart on meta stock we can see this copper colored line that calculates if the stock is going up faster that is outperforming the market or slower that is underperforming the market on this cyan day if we see that this line relative performance line is tilting up then we can conclude that not only is the stock going up in uptrend and pinpointing a buy point using cyan color but we also want that day price to go up more forcefully than broad market which was true on this day so that is a condition we look for entering any long trade finally we want to see on the daily chart that reward risk is acceptable as i mentioned we can achieve significant profit on an annual basis swing trading provided we have reasonable success rate and also average reward is higher than average risk so in our charts the risk and reward are not decided based on arbitrary percentage levels but based on stocks volatility that is how we decide on stop loss and support resistance that we use for deciding target i will not take time to go through this chart but when i go through the trades from traders community i will demonstrate how the target and stop loss levels were set so if we look at the first four conditions what we are doing here is aligning more and more edges in favor of the trade we want the stock to go in uptrend then the last candle need to be bullish 
it has to tilt down in a swing and tilt up allowing us to catch the bottom of a swing we want the stock to move up faster than market we use relative performance for that and we make sure reward risk is acceptable on top of that we want a longer time frame like weekly time frame for the time frame all we need to see is the weekly candle backdrop color is bullish or not in our charts that is shown as cyan color so in silver we can see that it is cyan now so it meets the conditions for a go with flow long term so when we look at the technical chart conditions we are aligning force from both the daily chart as well as the weekly chart in favor of our trade and when these conditions are made we just take the trade without second guessing let me illustrate these points now using some of the trades that were shared in traders community now before i do that i would like to ask a question using stock swing trading what kind of annual profit are you expecting as a percentage of account size so if i have say for example ten thousand dollar account and i'm swing trading with it using stock what kind of annual return may i expect could you share what is your expectation from such swing trading anyone you may type your answer in the q a panel 12 percent okay let me show you that conservatively using very conservative estimate more than 12 percent is achievable what is required is discipline and a robust system okay can you see my screen my whiteboard is not working so let me use the sticky notes you can see the sticky note right okay let us say we are taking 10 trades and each trade as i mentioned we want to risk only small percentage of our account so we want to risk only two percent if you are beginning you may start with one percent but let's say we are risking no more than two percent in a trade and all the trades should have similar risk not that one trade i will take 10 percent risk another trade i will take two percent of account as risk that is a random approach and if we are having the approach as random we cannot expect the output to be non-random so output will also be inconsistent most likely we we'll lose all our account so we are going to risk fixed size no more than two percent in each trade and we are not going to enter a trade unless we have many many factors in our trades favor both from daily chart and weekly chart and also the reward risk ratio is acceptable so every trade we are expecting based on our profit target and stop loss at least same as risk percentage so let's say two percent so we have a number of trades that we are taking this is in our control risk how much we are taking that is in our control how much is our potential reward relative to risk that we can see on the chart with pretty high accuracy based on our technical analysis so we can also control and take only those trades where potential reward is at least as much as potential risk so all these are in our control one more thing we need to know is what is our success rate probability theory says that if we are taking a large number of trades in a year let's say 100 trades in a year and if we just close our eyes and market is random we don't know anything about the stock we keep on taking the trade maybe based on coin toss then over large number of trades we will have equal number of success equal number of failure so some trades will go into profit some will go into loss that is why coin toss 
but we are not using coin toss we are using a robust system technical charts daily weekly both and later i will share that we look at more than technical but for now let us focus on only technical because we are looking at some basis of taking the trade not coin toss all i am expecting is at least six out of ten trades to be profitable not seven out of ten not eight not nine not ten out of ten just six out of ten to be profitable if we do that then let's see what is our result after 10 trades our profit is six trade multiplied by two equal to 12 percent of account size our loss is four multiplied by two minus eight percent so our net profit is four percent of account size that is assuming we are taking 10 trades now what I am proposing that active swing traders can take about 100 swing trades in a year that is year that is about two per week it's not a very large number just two trades per week will result in 100 trades per year which will therefore result in 40 percent net profit of the account size and the account size in our control now to review again can we control the number of trades yes we can control we can take 10 trades we can take two trades a week or we can take 100 trades a year risk is in our hand every trade we can risk only two percent reward we can control because we don't enter a trade unless we see that profit target is acceptable related to the stop loss point and because we are doing not only technical analysis we are also looking at industry strength and even fundamental strength of a stock and broad market strength we can say that we will have at least six out of ten trades profitable over a large number of trades over say 100 trades and if we do that we can achieve 40 percent annualized return using stocks That is our aim and for that what is required is also patience. We have to wait for all the signals to be aligned not only technically but also whether the stock is fundamentally strong or not. And I always look at the industry strength as well. If we align these forces, it is very reasonable to assume that six out of 10 trades will go into profit. And objective mathematical calculation shows we can expect 40 percent now if you want to take only one trade per week then the percentage return on an annualized basis will be 20 percent now if you are based in singapore i am resident of singapore many singapore people can trade in multiple markets they don't have to trade only in the singapore exchange they can trade in Hong Kong or Australia or America market and when we have access to so many markets it is very reasonable to assume that we will have at least one or two trade setups every week on average some weeks we may have more some weeks we may have less but we will certainly have on average two or more trades from so many markets using stocks liquid stocks so we have some estimation of what percentage return we can expect if we are disciplined and we can control all these factors let us now go through some of the trades that were actually shared and i will go through only go with flow trades that is trend following trades we have a traders community from the website you can go to community or we can go directly to quiz playground graduates club trade idea stretch chat most of the forums will be accessible to public so you can see how in the past trades were taken most of the trades are shared by me few trades may be shared by other people so let's look at some of those examples 
and one thing you will see is how the trades were identified at the right edge not in the middle of the chart and some people show the middle of the chart and say that this is where i could have or would have bought the stock or shorted the stock in my view that is not an authentic approach we have to be confident to know where we are taking the trade at the right edge and should be confident to share at least some of them with public i do that now this was a trade on gamestop gme is the ticker symbol based on america and this is how the chart looked like when i shared the trade at the right edge i said that there is a potential short trade in gamestop now every trade's result is uncertain when i take a trade i never know whether it will work out it may go to profit target for a short trade like in this case as i mentioned i can decide the profit targets based on chart my profit target will be lower boundary that is this level and my stop loss will be just above recent high so it could be above this cyan candle but i see that there were number of memory lines automatically drawn very intelligent smart trend lines that can come from few days back to few years back because i saw that there were multiple memory trend lines providing resistance in this case i might put my stop at this price level and my entry price is at the close of this candle so i have a reward of this much and risk of this much to me it was acceptable now how did i find the trade i could find the trade in multiple ways one is as i mentioned if you are tracking a fixed number of stocks you may just open them using this weekly chart on the left we call backdrop chart and daily chart on the right we call hop on chart and apply the checklist conditions let me go to the checklist condition and toggle back and forth between this chart and the conditions to see how the conditions were met i'll go back to the swing trading click on the checklist and i will go through the checklist only for the first example for the other examples later on you may go through the checklist yourself so this was a short trade you go through short trade so all of these conditions on daily chart had to be true the first condition is flow or traffic light candle color bearish magenta or red so on daily chart our flow candle color was magenta so that condition was met second condition first direction line and third condition standard direction line those are the two direction lines drawn automatically should be bearish that is descending so first and standard at the cyan and magenta direction lines at the right edge of the chart they are tilting down so those two conditions were also met relative performance should be bearish that is descending that means the stock should be underperforming the market that was shown by this copper color dotted line it was downward trending at the right edge so at the right edge this condition was also met candle chart should be bearish with lower high and lower low we can see because the memory resistance line is there we can see there is lower high and there are gradual lower lows so that condition was also met at the right edge and candle shape should be bearish that is solid or with long upper tail i mentioned the interpretation of the candles earlier so a solid or long upper tail candle is bearish in this case we had a solid candle so that was bearish movement that is momentum speed acceleration is bearish that is red that is these three dotted indicators momentum at the bottom then speed and acceleration all of that need to be read what it is checking is between these ups and downs 
when is the first candle when acceleration speed and momentum all are turning red so in one candle prior to the last candle we see it was green and then turned red so this was the optimal place to take the short trade that condition was met reward risk ratio at least one or more so as i mentioned my reward would have been at the lower boundary level these boundary lines are drawn automatically usually they cover the area that the stock is moving into usually usually they don't go beyond it much it is a statistical calculation so my profit target would be at the lower boundary statistically that is where it is likely to go and stop will be just above recent high so in this case reward risk was acceptable so all the conditions on daily hop on chart were met if i look at the weekly backdrop chart condition there is one condition only backdrop candle color has to be bearish that is magenta so in the weekly backdrop candle color it was magenta so i took some time to go through the checklist however once you are used to these charts you need only 10 seconds maybe maximum 30 seconds to identify the conditions why i say so is because everything is color coded there is no parameter to be set and even for the indicators there is no threshold against which you have to compare anything like is it above 70 is it below 20 in my experience when those parameters or thresholds are used different traders use them differently and even the same trader uses them differently across different instruments what really happens is different traders looking at the same chart comes to different conclusions not any one of them is smarter than the other but just that they are using a wrong approach meaning a non robust approach a robust approach should be one that should take care of all or most of the market conditions if i have to keep changing parameters or keep checking it with thresholds which are somewhat arbitrary we cannot probably expect the outcome to be consistent arbitrary input gives arbitrary output in our charts we try to avoid that and we rely on only color coding there is not even any label of the indicators we can just look at the color overall magenta red is bearish green cyan is bullish that is for the indicators like movement which are color coded and if it is a line indicator then if it is tilting down it is bearish if it is tilting up bullish so we can instantly know if a chart weekly daily bearish or bullish the other way we can find these trades immediately is to use a program called sonar so if i go to metastock there is an explorer in explorer we have a number of possible explorations or scanners and you can see there is a bounce long and short that is for exhausting market long short box long short for sideways market and here are the two for trend following go with flow long short so if you are looking for a stock in an industry that is strong now then you may run only go with flow long if you are looking for a trade in an industry that is weak you may just run go with flow short scanner you can choose any list of stocks australia hong kong india usa singapore doesn't matter it will find possible trades and you can then plot them using the chart and within 10 seconds or so you should be able to decide and take the trade that was how this trade was also identified let me see if a follow-up post was there now this is the point where i had identified the go with flow trend following short trend and my profit target was lower boundary after a few days i see that price had gone below lower boundary and that is the point that trade is to be closed as i mentioned earlier swing trading needs a specific mindset once it hits profit target profit must be booked in some case if you see the stock is bearish technically fundamentals are still weak 
the industry is weakening or already weak, then you may hold on to partial position, but must book at least some profit, at least half, at least two third. And in other webinars, I have explained how stop loss is to be adjusted depending on whether you are exiting two third or half position. But a swing trader must exit at predefined target and not think that, okay, this is the stock that is going to give me 70, 80, 100% profit. If we try that, we are deviating from the principle of swing trading. Again, we are making our approach random. And if our approach is random, we cannot expect the outcome that is profit to be consistent. So my approach is to book the profit. And then I don't go back and keep on opening the chart every day and either be happy that it actually came back up or be sad that it fell down a lot. I am happy if I am following my discipline and as I showed in the calculation, all we need is six out of 10 trades to be profitable, risk small, small, 2% in each trade, we can easily get 40% annualized return. And if I get that, I'm happy. I'm not trying to make a lot of money from one trade for swing trading. For long term, I have some position of my retirement account, the Singapore CPF account, but that's a different approach. We are talking about only swing trading and that too only trend following. So this was a trade that was exited successfully in a couple of days. Let's take another trade example. This was also shared in the community, my trade only. That was on global logistics. And you can see it from .si, it's a Singapore listed company. I will not go through the checklist, but just looking at the chart, you can see that at the right edge, and that is where we need to make decision. We already had higher high, we already had higher low. We had a cyan color candle. We had all the movement indicators green. My entry price would be here. Stop loss will be just below recent low. Target will be at the upper boundary. Just visually, I could see that my reward risk is acceptable. On the weekly chart, only requirement was that the candle color had to be cyan. And I had to also have the relative performance tilting up. That is, at that time, global logistics was going up faster than Singapore broad market. So all the conditions were met. I never know the outcome, but my job is not to second guess, just take the trade, a small risk. And that's how the trade is to be taken. Let's see if there is a follow-up post. This is where the trade was identified. And in fact, after a couple of days, it hit the upper boundary. As I mentioned, at least partial profit, two third or half must be booked. And Remaining positions profit has to be protected within trailing stop. But in any case, we can see that profit target was hit in a couple of days. In this case, it gave 2.49%. It gave 20% profit at the right edge. Now see, this stock is a very low price stock, $2. When a stock is $2 stock, $1 stock, it has a higher percentage profit. But if we are talking about reasonable price stocks, say $20 to $50, maybe in US market, then we'll see that we can expect between two to 4% profit from each swing trade. How? Because we are trying to enter the trade around this area. What is this area? It is in the middle of the two boundary lines, which is also called value area. And we are trying to exit at the upper boundary. So for liquid stocks, this distance tends to be between two to 4%. And for reasonable price stocks, for lower price stocks, the percentage will be higher. But in any case, in a trade, we are going to risk only 2% of our account size. Whatever be the percentage by which the stock is going up is not the only important thing because we are going to risk only 2%. Probably we are going to also take a profit around 3%, 4%, at least partial profit. So this was another profitable go with flow long swing trade. Let's look at another example. This was from Hong Kong market. This was a shipping company. Now I mentioned that when I trade, I go beyond technical analysis because a particular trade's outcome is always uncertain. What I'm trying to do is align more and more forces. 
I am already doing that from daily chart. I am already doing that from weekly chart. I am already comparing with overall market that relative performance is high. And then in real life, I also look at the company's fundamental. We have a tool. Again, it is visual. So this allows me to compare many stocks in this case 1138.hk which was the shipping company costco shipping in hong kong and compared it with its peers and you can see some of the peers are based in hong kong.hk some are based in singapore the system automatically retrieves the peer list because we are global investor we just want to know where the most strong stock is fundamentally speaking now and all we need to do is look at the color coding again green is strong red is weak the first three parameters let us focus on the first column says is earnings reliable meaning the company is not juggling or making accounting subjective assessments to inflate earnings green means no it is not doing that it is strong it's more reliable from quarter to quarter the earnings data so for long investment i would like to look at that the second column relative score calculates relative to the industry's peers how is it priced that is at current price is it overvalued or undervalued again green is good you may look at the score the first few columns are scored between 1 to 100 100 being the best but you just need to look at the color green or cyan means strong so relatively speaking respect to industry peers this is very strong internal value score calculated based on dividend earnings projection etc again scored between 1 to 100 but color coding is enough is strong and even has a very strong dividend scoring 9 out of all these stocks all these 20 or 21 stocks so we had a stock where fundamentally it has reliable earnings relatively speaking it is scoring high internal value of the stock is very high and even has a high dividend yield we can see operating margin score is also high you can just look at the color so fundamentally this stock was strong if i look at another view of the stock and all these templates are readily available using a weekly line chart we can see that price was going up coming down and at the right edge because that is where we need to make a decision price was being supported by memory support line again automatically drawn very smart trend line and the right edge it was tilting up and finally on our weekly daily chart again we can go through the conditions quickly it already has higher high higher low we have a cyan candle we have all the movement indicators green and the weekly only requirement is that is to be cyan relative performance was tilting up so all the conditions were met technically on top of that fundamentally this stock was strong and when doing fundamental analysis we have to always compare with peers in isolation the numbers doesn't mean much and we saw relative to peers it was strong and lastly i looked at the industry again just by looking at this table visually i can see that over previous months from month one to month 12 period the rank and this is rank now not score and rank one is based rank 255 if we are looking at 255 industry groups is the worst anyway we can just look at the color coding magenta red is weak so made in transportation the industry that is the industry of costco shipping was weak for a long time all the periods from month one to month 12 and over 10 day 5 day 1 day period it improved significantly so what i had is a stock that is giving me a technical buy point with good reward risk ratio which is fundamentally strong and in an industry that was weak but starting to go up and i followed up with the result this was our entry signal day after some days it hit the memory resistance line by that time we had covered more than risk distance so profit could be booked the other way to book profit is wait for price to hit the upper boundary the upper boundary was also hit on this day so profit could be booked at that time 
So this was a trade where we took a go with flow long trade, but look not only at technicals, but also at industries and fundamentals. And I mentioned that there is a trade right now I identify. This is the last example that I will take. I shared it during the weekend. This is a company in the USA called Weight Watchers. This was discussed in the weekly market roundup, 2nd September this weekend. You can see the video from our video store. You can go to education video or you can go to our YouTube channel, but all the weekly market rounds up are listed in the video page. So I shared this trade during the weekend, a company called Weight Watchers. And as I said, I go beyond technical analysis. So Weight Watchers looking through the same fundamental analysis, I can see that if you look at these growth parameters, earnings growth and revenue growth, five year that is long term, three year that is medium term is red. I just need to look at the color coding. So growth was weak. If I look at relative value, it is neither overvalued nor undervalued. That is neither blue nor magenta, it is yellow, so medium, but internal value is very weak. So at, we can have a stock either growth week or valuation week. Usually we do not have both. In this case, I have growth week. So I can expect this stock to go down from fundamental perspective. This was in an industry as of today, personal services. We can see again in the past few months, it was cyan color and now slowly turning magenta. That is the industry is weakening. And if I look at the chart, I can see in the daily chart, it is starting to show lower high, lower low. It just broke below the memory support line as of last Friday. All the conditions in the daily chart are met for go with flow short trade and weekly chart only condition is it should be magenta. So this met all the conditions and I don't yet know how the trade will work out. But as I explained, we just need six out of 10 trades to be profitable, manage our risk. Secret is to align as many factors in favor of our trade as possible, objectively speaking, not judgmental or bias basis. For this trade again, I could align the industry force, which is weakening the fundamental force, low growth, and the technical chart, which shows that it is about to fall down. And I could confidently Post the trade without knowing the result. That is the approach of superior profit trading. We discussed go with flow trading today. There are other trade setups that could be used to trade successfully at reversal points. I will not go through them, but just let me explain one thing before I close. This is silver chart, and I mentioned the headwind signal. This is the bullish headwind signal that comes at the bottom of a down move or you can see the bearish headwind signal here that may come at the top of an up move and we just don't use this signal but combining this with the unambiguous checklist we could take a long trade probably here short trade here and we can see another bearish headwind here take a short trade here for swing trading but that will be the discussion point of another webinar where we may discuss trend reversing headwind trade and we'll also cover exhaustion based bounce trade and sideways market trades later. So those were a few examples of go with flow trade that I share. That is all that I plan to share for this one hour today. If you have any other question, I'd like to answer them. You may ask me questions at the email ID listed here. If not, thank you for attending. And I look forward to seeing you in our next webinar and also in the weekly market roundup sessions. Have a great day and trade profitably.